Korikod Municipal Corporation is one of the oldest corporations in Kerala founded in 1962. It was the capital of East Wild Malabar region and is spread over an area of 119 square kilometers with a population of 6.09 lakhs. In Kerala, we have the Kerala State Electricity Board Limited, which is a public sector undertaking under Government of Kerala that generates, transmits and distributes the electricity supply in the state. Within the corporation, the KSEB has two electrical divisions and which is further divided into 14 electrical sections. I am Dr. Bina Philip, Mayor of Kodikoda Municipal Corporation. Our state has announced that Kerala is going to be filament free state. Even before that, in 2019 December, I am proud to say that this corporation has entered into a contract with Karnataka State Electronics Development Corporation to make Kodikoda Corporation free of filament lights. And we have started the work. In between, as everybody knows, the pandemic had its own effect and so the work was a bit slowed down. But now we have completed nearly 90% of the work. That means we have replaced the filament bulbs with uh, LED bulbs. Uh, we have 5000 plus more uh, to be fitted again. And we hope that by the end of uh, February 2021, we'll be able to claim that this is the first corporation in our state to be filament free. Korikod Municipal Corporation has always been an early bird among other local self-government bodies in Kerala which took a proactive approach towards finding a best fitting solution to the street lighting and its maintenance within the corporation. Retrofitting the conventional street lights with energy efficient LED lights would save millions of units of energy every year and thus helping in reducing the effective CO2 emission and global greenhouse gas production. Over the years, the major roads and all the streets in Kurikod Municipal Corporation were dominated by the conventional fluorescent lamps, compact fluorescent lamps, sodium vapor lamps and mercury vapor lamps etc. which were having two main disadvantages. These lamps used the mercury and the disposal of the same after use created a major environmental issue. The effective light output per watt consumed were poor when compared with the LED. The system of energy billing practiced for the street lights were of unbuilt composite tariff system by the KSEBL and the energy bills were paid to the KSEBL by the corporation along with the annual maintenance for the street lights which included the cost of spares fittings, equipment rental charges, labor charges, etc. This was a huge burden on the corporation provided that the complaints and worries related to the street lighting for the general public were not solved on time. The corporation found that it is spending approximately 42 lakhs towards monthly energy charges and another 16 lakhs were spent towards the maintenance and repair cost monthly. It was time for a rethinking and thus it was proposed to convert the complete conventional streetlight fittings to energy efficient LED streetlights. But converting the complete streetlights to LED would invite a huge investment to the corporation and again another investment had to be made for the installation of the same. It is being noted that the disposal of the conventional fittings also would be another Herculean task for the corporation. Thus, a nationwide tender was called in which it was required to convert the 35,102 numbers of conventional lights to LED together with operating and maintaining the same for a period of 10 years and also ensuring that the streets and roads are lighted as per the National Lighting Code. Among the companies participated, Karnataka State Electronics Development Corporation Limited was the L1 bidder and was selected to execute the project for a period of 10 years with an EMI of Rs 47.5 lakhs per month which includes the energy charges payable to KSEBL and also the maintenance charges. It is to be noted that the corporation had to make zero investment in the project and 
an additional 10% increase. The light quantity was also accounted in the monthly EMI of 47.5 lakhs and would remain the same for the 10 years for the 39,600 numbers of LED lights even if there is any increase in the unit energy charges payable to KSEBL. But as there is a scope of city expansion and there is always a need of new lights, it was decided to consider a future expansion of up to 100% increase in the number of lights in the corporation within project duration. But the EMI for any additional lights shall be calculated by means of a linearly diminishing rate based on the total connected load of the LED lights which is one of the main highlights of the project. The functioning of the street lights will be monitored through a central control and monitoring system where the reports about the non-functioning lights and energy consumption will be auto-generated and reported to the officials of the corporation. Together with the central control and monitoring system, the O&M service provider will set up a control room and 24-7 toll-free number to attend the complaints of the general public. To facilitate a faster complaint rectification, the operation and maintenance team will be divided into different zones and each zone will be equipped with required numbers of technicians and equipments. Other than this, during the operation and maintenance, it is required that the O&M service provider has to maintain three key performance parameters. Number one, at any time, the total number of non-burning lights to be below 2% of the total number of lights. Failure to maintain uptime of minimum 98% of all LED lamps in the project area will attract the penalty of 0.01% of EMI payable for the month for each such day or days witnessed or documented in the CCMS. Number 2. A non-burning light above 48 hours invites penalty to the O&M service provider such that 10 times the energy charges for the non-burning hours shall be levied from the service provider if the service is not resumed within 24 hours. Number 3. There should be a guaranteed energy saving for 54% from the conversion of conventional lights to the LED lights. It is quite evident that this project can enhance the visibility and safety and help reduce the electricity consumption and costs, free up resources for other pressing needs and ensuring a high quality street lighting as expected by the citizens and their quality of life and to conclude, this will serve as a model and better solution to the other cities as well. And I do congratulate the workers who have been working all along, the KSEB as well as the KIONIC, which is the acronym for that Karnataka State uh, uh, Corporation, which is a public se uh, sector organization. And I do wish that the people of Calicut will be enjoying more light, mean more number of light, and the consumption of electricity will be less. I wish all success for this project and it is a model for other uh, corporations or municipal states or other states can follow.